So um, we're going to talk with Suzanne tonight, and she's going to tell us about her background and what inspires her. And I'm going to prompt her with some questions. Um, and I do have some slides that will show you of her work um, so that she can share anything she wants to about the work that she has hanging in the gallery right now. So, so with that, Suzanne, why don't you tell us a little bit about your background and how you ended up being an artist? Yes, thank you. Good evening, everyone. Um, actually, I never realized I had any talent for art. As a kid, I would do coloring books, you know, paint by number and, you know, draw stick figures or I used to drive my mother crazy drawing horses all the time. She said she'd always have to ask me what they were. <laughs> so, and then um, it wasn't until um, 2005 that I took a art class 101 at the Muskegon Community College and they did a little bit of everything. They did watercolor, drawing, pottery, um, just to dabble in all the different types of art. And I um, did a drawing and it was the college bought it and hung it in their office. So it was a mm -hmm. big surprise that um, I had any type of talent like that. So that kind of prompted me to start taking uh, lessons from local artists in the area. And then I took some from a couple of nationally known artists also. So um, yeah, it, it surprised me. <laughs> when I started out, it was basically uh, watercolor. So I have a, a large background and knowledge in watercolor also, even though right now my, um, most of my work is in pastel. So um, how I started, you notice that most of my work is um, animal related. I have done pastel, I'm sorry, I've done landscapes, um, uh, some portrait work, um, some still life, and I kept coming back to the animals, you know, it's just my first love. Um, so I started out, um, we had lots of animals growing up and I always loved them. I thought I was going to be a vet until I found out I was terrible in math and um, the sciences. So I thought, well, that cuts that out. <laughs> so, um, and then I had uh, a couple of young ladies, young teenagers that um, had a couple of horses next door. And I used to sit on the fence and watch them ride and ask them if I wanted to ride. And I go, I never rode a horse before. Well, then that started my career in uh, applique horses. It was um, at 16, I started riding. Um, I did 4-H. Um, then I went into showing hunters. And from there, I worked uh, for two gentlemen in Grand Rapids, uh, training or probably exercising, doing a little training for the polo horses. I did... Um, competitive trail riding, endurance riding. Um, so I worked on the horse racetrack for a while. So my passion was horses all along and I always had dogs also. And um, so with that, I started taking dressage lessons and bought a farm. And then I studied dressage for 30 years now. Well, it's been longer than that, 45 years, but my business was for 30 years training, uh, dressage horses, uh, teaching lessons. Uh, we had a small breeding program. I've shown up all over Michigan and the United States. Um, I had a Grand Prix horse that was absolutely wonderful. He taught me to pee off and passage and all the fancy movements that the Lippizons did. So, uh, a couple of years ago, I sold my farm. So I thought, I'm going to take my art career to the next level. So I started um, doing more of it and investing more time. And so that's where I'm at now. Okay, um, great. So, um, so horses inspire you. Um, but I know with the work that you have hanging in the gallery right now, you've got a number of different animals. Um, 
what inspires you? Like, I know you're chipmunk um, <laughs> painting. What, what, like, what inspires you? Do you just watch the animals and then decide, or how, you know, how do you go about that? Well, the series, I decided to do a series of um, woodland creatures of Michigan. Um, so I thought, you know, I'm going to start, you know, everybody paints the deer and the other animals that are more familiar. So I thought, no, I think I'm going to take some of the little underdogs, like nobody likes chipmunks usually. I mean, they're cute, but, um, and I did the possum and the porcupine and all the, and the muskrat. So I did a whole series there. Um, what inspired me? I just kind of looked at the animals and, um, decided basically which ones you know nobody really sees or hears about and i thought well pick those first so and when i go to pick out what pictures i want and how i want my idea of what i'm looking for in, in a um painting is that um i i look at a book most of my work, of course, is photos, take photos that we're taking because there's no way I can sit and, you know, and, and paint, and, you know, watching a porcupine <laughs> or something. So 90% of all my work is um, through photos. And I try and look, pick a photo that inspires me, either um, interesting composition, um, probably, emotion you know how it affects me emotionally does it bring a smile to my face or does it um, evoke like a sadness or you know something that just looks at you and, and talks to you so i'm pretty much very emotional when i look at them and i'm going like oh yeah you know that would be great so a lot of times i'll take a photo that um has a cluttered background and i'll just put it on a paper that is um pretty much as just a single portrait. So it just depends, you know, what I'm looking at. Okay. Yeah. Um, so I know your art has taken you in many directions and I know you um, have received some recognition for some of that. So do you wanna talk about any of the competitions or, or anything that you've entered your work into and what maybe you're most proud of? Yeah. Um, I've been entering different competitions, pick and choose, but the Great Lakes Pastel Society um, picked one of my um, paintings of a cow. <laughs> and um, I had a nice award for that. And that was pretty exciting. That was my first award with all only pastels as a competition. And the Great Lakes Pastel is all you know, probably about four or five states. So I was pretty excited about that. And I did sell the painting out of that show. So that's, um, that was pretty exciting. And then the uh, Uptown Gallery a few years ago, um, one of my paintings won Best of Show and it was sold that also. So it was pretty exciting. I was, love that. And I was out in California at the time they, called me and said, you know, you're painting one best of show and I'm going, are you going to be at the awards? And I go, no. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was a bummer, but yeah. So yeah, and the painting was sold. It was a big um, Russian wolfhound. So, okay. Yeah. So I'm going to pull your slides up here and maybe okay. you can talk about some of your work that sure. we have on display. Hopefully you can see the screen. Yep. Okay, let me try to get to the next screen. What's in, why is it not moving here? Oh, there we go. Okay, this is um, a, it's called Serenity. And it was a cat that was sleeping in the sunshine. It was just, you know, taking up all the sun and I could just feel what the cat was feeling. And it was like, oh, I have to do this. And it wasn't really front lit that much. So I added more to it and the cat was white. So I thought, what kind of background paper? So I found uh, a paper that I really like to use. It's a My Tins, it's a Canson paper and it comes in different colors. So I picked a burgundy paper and then I added the whites. You see the pinks coming through the ears and around different areas. 
that would be the background coming through. So that's how that one came about. Okay, and I apologize. We may see some reflection in a couple of these. Yeah, um, that's okay. <laughs> I, I even took them off the wall and, and moved them around the gallery to try to avoid the reflection of the lights and everything, and it was just impossible, so. Yeah, and this is one of um, another, this is a kitten and um, another back light, lit, back lit this time. And um, that was uh, done also on a Mykins paper. Um, it was a chocolate brown. The cat had lots of brown in it. Um, so I used to help the background come through um, in the basket. Um, the cat was so much fun to do. What I try to do with my animals is that you'll notice sometimes you don't see lots of individual hairs and lines. Um, I take the fur as blocks of color a lot of times and represent the fur that way and the movement of the fur. Um, but I told everybody after I got done with this basket, if you don't like one of your students you know, teaching them, have them do a basket because it was like so time consuming. <laughs> But that was fun. I know this one gets admired a lot when people come through the gallery. Oh, good. <clears throat> um, this was a photo reference I got from, in fact, most of my references for my paintings come from um, sometimes my own um, friends, relatives. There is a few different uh, websites out called Wildlife Reference Photos, and this came from that website. And also another one called Wet Canvas, and that's an excellent place also to get. Um, there's um, also like Pixabay, Pixels, Unsplash, or a couple of websites that offer royalty free photos that you can get. So that's, I do a lot of research and try to find, I might have two or three different pictures of a rabbit or whatever, and I kind of put them together to make one. Um, this was done also on a Mykins paper, and it was a um, pink paper, because I wanted the purples and all the different colors to come through the paper. Um, and it was, I did that the first, part of this winter, which was pretty, oh, I'm looking at all the snow, but I thought snow rabbit, you know, snowshoe rabbit would be kind of fun. Okay, my little skunk here, this is part of my uh, wildlife series. Um, this was a photo I seen, I just fell in love with it. Um, she was, or he, whatever we want to call it, was laying kind of a little bit in the grass and stuff. And I thought, well, I'm gonna put him on the log. And then he didn't have a back leg, which looked kind of odd. I think it was just underneath him. So I added a little back leg to him. I took out every bit of the background. I put him on a log. And this was done on my Tim's Touch, which is a standard uh, paper and it was black. And again, it was just such a cute little face. I thought, oh, and his tail was up like, am I going to spray you or not spray you? You know, he had just that little look. <laughs> yes. All right. Here's the chipmunk. Yeah, this chipmunk, he got accepted at the Uptown Gallery show that's now hanging. So if you want to go see Chippy, he's there. Um, this was another one that had a lot of background to it. He was sitting on that log. Um, it had a little bit of snow. He had one eye shut. Um, you couldn't see his back leg very, one foot, that back foot was sticking out. Um, so I added that. I have added an eye to him. I took a lot of the background out and this is also done um, on a black paper. And it's a smaller one, it's probably about it eight by 10. So I try not to do my little critters too big because I don't want them to look a little uh, grotesque. I think when I started blowing these up, they were like, maybe not. <laughs> I'll keep them kind of more real life size. 
Okay. Um, this one was pretty interesting to do. You can't really see the bottom, but in the bottom of the um, painting is a bunch of rocks, rocks with moss on them and stuff. And I did this on my temp's paper also. It was white. And I put a watercolor wash on the background. So what you're seeing um, through there is the, the texture of the background and everything is from uh, the watercolor. And then I put the rabbit leaping um, at the very top of the painting. And I left <clears throat> to show the height of him leaping. And then I put the rocks and stuff below. Now I think, why didn't I put the, the soft little bunny, you know, jumping through the grass or something? But at the time when I was doing this, it was just when COVID started, and I'm thinking, oh, what are we going to do? You know, everything is so bleak. And I thought, here's a soft, wonderful little bunny. And the COVID's to me, my, you know, I hate to do my interpretation of it because everybody wants to look at it in a different way. But my interpretation of the COVID's on the bottom, the hard rocks, you know, and the bleakness of the um, atmosphere that he's leaping through. But then this wonderful bunny coming through and looking like it's going to be okay. Oh, here's one of my woodland creatures, my series. And I didn't name them. He's just kind of like my little mouse. <laughs> so, yeah, he was on a little log. He's also done on my Tim's black paper. Um, I he was on just a little skinny log and I built up the bottom so he had more um so I built a better composition um so anyway yeah he was just I, you know again I went looked and went oh he's so cute so I took out the background again and made him made, made him the uh soul um look to this so that he was the one that you're looking at nothing else and just uh, what he was doing finding his little acorn okay this is um a of course part porcupine and he was another part of my woodland series um done on a um, black background again um and he had more going on underneath him. And I took all that out. I took the background out, which was green leaves and stuff. And the paw on the top was there. He was holding a post or a tree. And then the other, there was no other paw. And it just kind of looked blank there. So I had another little paw to him. So that was, and then. Boy, this took a lot of reference. You know, I, I just don't see a lot of um, porcupines. I must have pulled up and looked at, not exaggerating, maybe 20 different porcupines. They have such an odd little nose. You're just going like, oh my gosh, and the, the little eyes and stuff. But again, lots of quills. It took me a while to layer them the correct way so that they all look realistic. So that was that one. Okay, this was a uh, muskrat, and I think I did this on blue paper. And I'm not sure. Yeah, it was blue. But anyway, um, put him on a little log, um, eating a, I guess it was maybe a cattail or something at one time. And this is another one I had to do some research. Every it's kind of funny you pick an animal and then you go and like um, I'm very familiar with the um, conformation of dogs and horses and how their skull and how their you know all their features are. But on these other animals, each 
animal is so unique. So I had to do a lot of studying to make sure that I um, correctly represented how they really supposed to look. So, yep, this is, and then I added the um, marsh grass in front and added a background to them. Um, this is a friend of mine had a whippet for years, and I did this um, because it, I just loved her whippets, and he was done on a black background also. And I just wanted to bring out the eyes, I think, especially in um, horses and dogs and stuff that they you see a lot of their emotion and what they feel is what they, how they look at you through their eyes. We all probably have pets and we realize that. But um, it was a lot of fun to do. And this is Famoso. He's an Andalusian stallion. Um, there was many photos of him that I took. And um, he was, uh, so I kind of did a composition of taking all the different photos and making it into one. Um, he, his mane was on the other side. He flipped his mane to the, this side. Um, there was a, some other things on his bridle that I took off that was kind of um, distracting. So I simplified his bridle quite a bit. And I made sure in his eye that he had, a, the stallion had the most wonderful, softest eye, wonderful disposition. Andalusians are a wonderful breed. So he was done on black paper also. Oh, my zebra. Um, yeah, anybody has horses, you know, you probably are gonna like zebras too. <laughs> so um, I found this um, reference in um, the wildlife artist reference website and um, this is a very large piece and I made it to size. And I've read a lot on and seen a lot of zebras in person and they're about the size of a large pony. So then I went and took a ruler, a tape measure and went to my large ponies that I had, my um, schooling ponies and I measured all their heads. So then when I went to do this, I blew this up to the size of what the uh, pony's heads were. So I took measurements of the head, the pony. So this is, so I would make it true to size. So that was kind of fun. And doing zebras, I kind of got lost in all those stripes. So I ended up having to, wherever I made, wanted to make a black stripe, I wrote a B. And if it was white hair, I put a W so I could <laughs> keep it all straight. Cause after a while, I'm just going, I don't know where I'm at. I'm doing all this. Plus, because I had, you know, the stripes are going this way and around the neck to the other way and the legs and the head and around the cheek. I'm just going, oh my gosh. And in the reference photo, there wasn't a lot of detail in the mouth and muzzle and stuff. And I researched the um, zebra and um, did it uh, and combined a couple of them and did his nose and stuff and mouth. So that was a lot of fun. In the background I put in myself just doing it in the stuff. And I kind of like the composition. Um, it's kind of like in a triangle. And I like the idea of him looking down at to towards something. You know, it's made me wonder what he was looking at. So it's one of those, hmm, I wonder. You know? <laughs> okay. And this is my little again, my woodland creature, and everybody thinks possums are ugly. So I found this and I just thought, you know, this is like the cutest possum I've ever seen. <laughs> and I look at him, I just smile and go, now oh, that's a possum that, you know, everybody could love. So um, he was hanging on a tree in the woods and I took out lots of the woods and I put in a soft background and stuff and um, added a little more to his face because uh, in this pose I wanted to show what cute little feet he had and stuff. So that's how I thought of that one that was done on a brown line paper also. 
because you can tell from my photos, I really like doing um, bark and trees, logs and stuff. That fascinates me. Um, this I did this winter. Um, this become inspired. Um, I actually um, went out and took some pictures of some snow on the pines and I added a little pine cone and found a cute little cardinal and put them on top of it. I was inspired to do this because my mother's 92 and my sister bought her some uh, pajamas that had cardinals on them. So I thought, you know, I think I'll do a painting of a cardinal and I'll give her a print of it for Christmas and she can have uh, her cardinal painting while she's wearing the cardinal pajamas. So <laughs> you never know where you get inspiration or ideas, so that was it. <laughs> Great, thank you very much for sharing all that with us. So yeah. I have I have one more question for you and then we can yeah. take questions from the uh, audience too. Um, so what's next on your bucket list uh, as far as your art career? Do you have any dreams yet that you want to accomplish or? Um... Yeah, I, yeah um, I wanna get up my website. I um, have done many commissions and I think I'd like to um, take my art career and do many more commissions of um, pets or whatever people, you know, the pet uh, cats, dogs, horses, and I've done many of them and it was a lot of fun. And I just enjoy doing them because people tell me stories about them and I say, you know, tell me about their personalities, you know, um, tell me about them. And a lot of them are passed away, you know, and you present the um, painting to them and it's a very emotional thing and I love it so I'd like to do that and um, with my website then I can refer people back to that and show them the work that I've done and because there's a lot to it you know um, you know do you want do you want just one pet do you want a background do you not want a background what size do you want you know so there's a lot in it and um, it's it's to me, I love doing it. So that would be where I'd like to take a lot of my um, uh, career to go to. And also, um, there's a group of um, animal artists, and um, they have an international group. And I would like to uh, send my, see if I can get in as an associate member. That would be exciting. So. Good. So yeah. I guess I thought of one more question for you too. If you, do you know, like when you from, when you first start thinking about a, a piece that you want to work on, do you have an average amount of time that it takes you to a, a complete a piece of work? And I know obviously it depends on the size and. Oh, um, absolutely. Yeah. Um, it probably wouldn't take me so long if I wasn't like, I don't put a lot of thought and I have an idea, kind of look at the paper and say, what colors would I want to do and bring out? I struggle with backgrounds. So a lot of times I'll start a painting and I'll change the background. Um, and But I'm kind of one of these artists that I get into. I'm just so, it's so excited about getting into it. You know, if they say do thumbnails, you know, or little value studies. Oh, no, uh -uh, not me. I just get into it and I wing it. The, and I'm just going, oh, this was a really crazy idea. So a lot of times I have to backtrack. But m most of my average size paintings take me 20 to 30 hours, depending on the size. Now, the smaller ones like the chipmunk and um, there's... Mouse, yeah, so all of a sudden I couldn't think of his name. But anyway, the chipmunk, the mouse, and the other smaller ones, um, and the cardinal, probably eh, 10 to 20 hours. But I'm, I work slow. I'm not one of these, I, you know, I'm in no hurry. You know, I put a few marks down, you know, and I'll stand back and look at it, you know, and then I'll work for a while and, yeah, that's not gonna work, take it off, you know, and so that's how you work. Great. Yeah. Great. Does anyone have any questions for Suzanne?
I do have some favorite artists that I um, do a lot of research with. Um, one of them is Robert Bateman. He's one of the um, one of the more famous uh, wildlife artists, and I study a lot of his um, paintings and his compositions and what how he puts in his animals. Um, John Surrey Lester is another one that's very good if you're interested in um, animal art. Um, Terry Isaac is another really good one. Um, in Michigan, Annie Kruger, she's from the other side of the state. Um, I get a lot of um, inspiration of looking at Annie's work. She's had um, pieces at uh, Art Prize. Um, her paintings have won and have come in second place. She works large and very dramatic, very interesting. And uh, a lot of her work is done with um, simple backgrounds also. And I take a lot of inspiration from her and I met her quite a few times. And when this thing is done, she invited me to visit her studio. So I'm real excited about that. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. Okay. But, um, yeah, so um, most of my work right now is pastel. Um, I started out, like I said, in uh, watercolor, and I've done some animals in watercolor. Um, I kind of like to go back to that, maybe do some more watercolor, you know, with the animals. Um, ex I would like to experiment a little bit more with mixed media. Um, I have done watercolor backgrounds on some of my um, pastel prints, but, you know, just adding more to my pastels to make them more exciting or doing my uh, watercolors and adding pastel over top of them. Um, just, I um, want to, well, I've already started a um, painting in acrylic, never done acrylic, but I have all my acrylic stuff now and I'm gonna go for it. So here I am winging it again. I'm gonna do a <laughs> and I'll learn as I go, you know? So I'm, well, I'm not it, afraid it, to try things. Yeah, and you've done a good job at that so far. So I don't think you'll go wrong. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. Yeah. If yeah. no if no questions from the audience, um, I guess we do have a question. Teresa has a question for okay. you. Okay. Mm -hmm. Say you have an amazing talent. I love all the work that we got to see today. It, your animals look like they could just crawl right out of the picture, and that's just oh, fabulous. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to do them. I enjoy it. When you see it, the painting start to come together, especially when you get the eyes in and they're right, you know, it's just like it makes you smile. It's like, oh, that's why I do animals. I love it, you know. Yeah, and, and the photos don't do them justice either. They, you know, if you're in the Muskegon area, come down to the gallery. Um, you know, her her work will be um, hanging through March 3rd. Um, so it, yeah, doesn't do, the photos don't do them justice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and um, also I'm thinking once this COVID's over and everybody's out and about, I'm gonna have a little studio open house. So everybody will be welcome to come and visit. That will that would be very fun. Yeah. So any part any other parting thoughts, Suzanne? Um, no. Um, I think we I said everything. No, well, no. I could probably keep talking forever about the animals and um the painting and stuff. But also, I want to say that another one of my passions is the last um, ten years has been. Um, adopting senior dogs out of the shelters. And that's been a lot of fun, a lot of heartbreak because you lose them sooner. But um, I just love doing it. And I love doing, you know, helping out these little seniors that are big seniors, depending on who I get. But um, I just like the idea of not a lot. People don't want to when I go to the shelters, a lot of times want to get a senior dog because they don't, they're at the end of their life instead of a puppy or a year old dog. So I just feel compelled, you know, compassionate towards them. So. And thank you for doing that. Cause you're right. That's, 
that's yeah that's uh, not is a bad case so yeah but you know sometimes i lose them within six months i'll know they have a medical condition but um, i don't care if they live here for three months or six months or three days i'm going to give them a wonderful life you know and um, we have a good time with them we do bucket list stuff with them and Sometimes it works out, sometimes it don't. <laughs> yeah, well, thank you very much. You're so. welcome. Okay, well, with that, we will um, close the program out. Like I said, um, Suzanne's work is hanging in the gallery till March 3rd. Um, she usually has something in most of our shows, so it's not like that will be the end of her work in our gallery. But um, the pieces that you saw tonight on the slides are up on the wall right now. So um, please come and join us. And um, with that, this is being recorded and we will post this on our YouTube and social media channels. And um, thank you so much, Suzanne, for sharing all your, your story and your journey and um, you know tips on your work and, and everything you do um for the art world well thank you for asking me to do this to, so i can share my passion with you great have a good evening everyone thank you